Uh, good morning, everybody. Appreciate everybody being here this morning. It's good to see everybody here. At this time, Clerk Barger, if you will, call the roll, please. Master Combs? Here. Master Barger? Here. Master Tudor? Here. Master Bacon? Present. Just tell it. Here. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, the senior adult pastor, Bill Wright, from First Baptist Church Richmond, up to the podium, lead some word prayer. Appreciate you being here, Bill. Yep. Thank you, Judge Magistrates. Thank you for your service. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this day and all of your blessings in our life, Lord. Uh, we're grateful for the place where you put us, the place we live. Uh, we're thankful for those that serve us and lead us, and I pray you'll bless them. And for this opportunity today to, to serve in making decisions and guidance. So, Lord, we ask for your guidance in all proceedings and decisions, and may your will be done in our lives and through our lives and in our community always to your glory and your good and the people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bill. Sheriff, if you will. If you would please stand right and move your hats. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. Uh, guys, y'all have had a chance to look over the minutes from previous meeting. This time, any motion to second to approve? So moved. Second. No discussion. Call the roll, please. I have a question about the minutes. Sure. In the um, um, sections where we approved the contracts, should the dollar amount of the contracts that each one will probably be listed in there they're not like the oil price the rock price those prices should be included in the minutes um it can be that's up to the court what they want but we've never included prices I'm just curious yeah we never included prices in the minutes or the bid openings i don't know i mean what's the advantage of it i guess i don't know i think if you're going to include the uh, bid price you have to include the runner-up price too so you have to I mean, it's all it's all would, it's all for open records. I mean, it's all subject to open records. Right. Yeah, those bids have to be kept for five years. Yeah. I don't care about the bid price. What I care about is when I want to go back to look at those minutes. I mean, pull them back up from whatever two, three months from now. If I'm trying to figure a price on something, it's easy to find them and see it listed there. That's all I was thinking. About. Well, I can call Willie Scott just as easy. I'm just curious. We all put those in. Yeah, I'd say if you never have, let's, let's keep it that way. But we get you copies of the bids so that you'll have those for your records when, as a master, you're figuring, you know, asphalt or whatever it might be. Do you have those court, prices? Court, court member could request one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll just make it. We'll, we'll make a note. Yeah, we'll make a note. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Actually, what we'll do is we'll just do a spreadsheet of all the different ones, so you'll have one go-to sheet for all that. Is that good? Yes. Huh. All right. No more discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Just tell Yes. I'm sorry, I know no, there's a little okay. pause there, but I was. I'm just trying to keep this going. Yeah, I was. Uh, got a long agenda. I was thinking. Watch out, right? Welcome. If you will, give us our treasurer's report, please. Uh, your treasurer's report is in the drop box. Uh, as of 531 of 2018, our total <coughs> fund balance was $7,197,190.74. Uh, total fund balance for 2018. Our general fund revenues as of 531 were 91.8%. Our expenditures are at 65.1. Road fund revenues are at 86.8%. Our expenditures are at 79.4. Jail fund revenues are at 100.2%. Our expenditures are at 92.6. Uh, CSEP fund uh, revenues are at 14.33. Uh, expenditures are at 12.9. And 911 fund revenues are at 99.5%. And expenditures are at 64.8%. 
That's as of 531. Next month I'll have the uh, quarter, the end of the year report that will have everything on. Do you, uh, I mean, I know we only have a few days left. Do you feel like we'll be getting any more revenues in mm -hmm. between now and the end? Yes, of and some of the re yes. Okay. Because yes. right. this just shows us at 531, and yes, we will get. Right, yeah, we still have a month left. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any more coming in from the jail? Yes. I yes, we because we get a state payment for uh, state prisoners every month, and we haven't gotten any transfer. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's, that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thanks, Glenn. Any oh. questions, guys? Very good. All right. Uh, first order of business today is a recognition of a of a wonderful person, uh, of a wonderful leader uh, of our fire department. <coughs> And uh, it's going to be tough. Come on up, Barney. Hey, the fire guys, y'all come up too. You're all as much a part of this team. You know, uh, I have to say that, you know, uh, you've been here a whole lot longer than I have. Um, but uh, but there's, there's those certain employees, and not saying we don't have great employees all the way around, but there's those certain employees that you get connected to and that welcome you in. Um, and from the bottom of my heart, man, I want to thank you uh, for the four years that you've given me uh, in your leadership with the fire department. Uh, and I'm sure some of the other managers feel the same way, but um, man, you've been great. You've been good to me. And uh, I really appreciate what you've meant to Madison County for, I'm going to say 20 plus years, but I'd say it's pretty close, right? Yeah. 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 So this is a certificate of achievement for Barney Alexander, Madison County Fire Department. Uh, has been recognized for outstanding achievement and having served faithfully and honorably with dedication to the safety of the citizens of Madison County for 20 years. This recognition is hereby awarded this the 26th day of June 2018 by the Madison County Fiscal Court, signed Larry Combs, Roger Barger, Reagan Taylor, John Tudor, and Tom Bach. So congratulations, man. Yeah. Get right in the middle here, Barney. Slide on in. Masters, if y'all will, stand up and get behind. King, Sheriff, Judge. So, speech? No speech. No speech. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. Barney, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just could I come in on that? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, about all I want to say is I was here when Barney started. That's you were here when everybody was here. Yeah, well, that's, that's a long way. <laughs> but what I, what I want to say is what he left is uh, you can't match. I know by talking to him, talking to other firefighters, what he left for those firefighters and helped them along their journey. And I very much appreciate that. I know they do. They may not tell you that, but they do appreciate it. And I want to thank you for your service and good luck in whatever you do. Yeah. But you've left for the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back to work. Go back to work. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all, too. All right. Thanks for being here. Y'all look up to him, all right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, next is personnel. Scott Shepard, good morning, buddy. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. We'd like to uh, make the recommendation to hire Mr. Raymond Grant, Jr. He's here with us today. If you'd stand up, Mr. Grant. Uh, he applied for a position of CDL general labor. Uh, we wish to pay him uh, $13 per hour, and his start date will be June 27th. Uh, Mr. Grant is retired from uh, Berea Utilities. He does have a CDL license. He also can run various uh, equipment. Well, he should know the southern part of the county pretty good. We heard him just for you, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. <coughs> Make a motion we hire uh, Raymond Grant. So I've got a motion. I have a second. No, yeah. no discussion. Call the roll. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bucket? Yes. Just Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. 
Yeah. Early in the morning. Yeah. Uh, next, guys, I moved a couple of things around on the agenda a little bit. Uh, the approval of payment, the FEMA grant personnel, I moved it up to number three. So if y'all want to. This is something that you do not have any information in Dropbox. This is just approval we need from fiscal court. Cheryl Cross, as you all know, is our contract grant administrator and has a very specific scope of work when working on the FEMA Ruby Joe Ward project. Um, she and FEMA, as well as Ruby Joe, made us an arrangement for Cheryl to be contracted to do grant um, administration for their side of the project. Um, that check was going to be cut straight from Ruby Joe to Cheryl. However, FEMA, because we're the pass-through for the grant, is just asking that the check comes to us, and then we cut the check out to Cheryl Cross. This is for duties outside of her scope of work with our contract. It's more to do with it being a federal grant than it is with regards <coughs> to her role with us as a grant administrator. Yeah. Is that transaction through all but the passing this grant money? I think it's the end of it. Is that what you asked? Is this the yes. end of it? It's like sort of the last? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're closing yeah. out. There's not much more left of that closeout, is there? No, yeah. We'll wait to get reimbursed. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is part of that closeout process. So I just need approval to use Madison County Fiscal Court as a pass through for the Cheryl Cross payment. Compensation for, for her. Mm -hmm. yes. So move. Second then. First no discussion. Call the roll, please. Mr. Barter? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bucking? Yes. Mr. Coles? Yes. <coughs> Just Taylor. Yes. Uh, next is a second reading of Ordinance 1807. This is an admin code. Thanks, Colleen, by the way. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning. Um, so the only thing that was added or changed would be the communicating with the public and these human resource topics. That's on page 19. Um, just that any issues or topics related to employee information, grievances, referrals, disciplinary action would be directed and handled by the Human Resources Department. And then nothing else was changed. Under Section 3.3, .3, the same language that's in Section 1.14 was just moved, um, that any agency who falls underneath our property liability has to follow our drug free workplace policy. So that was 3.3, 3.3, 3.3, 3 drug free? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the drug free workplace. Well, I need to, okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Judge, I move we adopt these additions. All right, I have a motion uh, to approve second reading of Ordinance 1807, the admin code. Do I have a second? Second. There's no discussion. Call the roll, please. <coughs> Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bacon? Yes. Master Coles? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you. This is a good for, document, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, next, second reading of Ordinance 1808. This is 2018-2019 Fiscal Court Budget. Yes. Please uh, pass, right? It is. Uh, <laughs> yes. It is in your Dropbox, but I also gave you a hard copy for you to keep all year that you can reference back to. The only changes from the first reading to the second reading was we adjusted once we the uh, salaries were were lined out we adjusted the salary line items to reflect current employees and raises uh, second we changed the line item on uh, county parks repairs to put it under Donna uh, because you'll be overseeing those repairs uh, we adjusted Social Security Medicare and retirement calculations based on the new salaries uh, we decreased the amount the general fund transfers to the jail by fifty four thousand two ninety three uh, that was just an adjustment after salaries and all that stuff was done. That was the adjustment to come out. Um, that increases that with some other changes. Increase the general fund re reserve for transfer by seventy four thousand four hundred. That was the only changes made. Any questions? Do I have a motion uh, to approve? Second reading of Ordinance 1808 2018 2019 Fiscal Court Budget. So moved. Second. Good. It, it, as you know, uh, we went over this line item by line item, and it's uh, about as lean as we can afford to do it. I mean, we wish we had some more finances coming in, but uh, we, we try to use every dollar wisely, and uh, I think we have in this budget. And so, I, I'm, for what we've got to work with, I think we did a good job. I agree, buddy. I do, I do. Thanks, Glenn. I have a motion and a second. 
no other discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, next is approval of 2018-19 employee pay increase. Yes, yeah, so you'll see there's three different um, lists. There's one for elected officials, one for the jail, and then the fiscal court. If they do not have anything marked underneath movement, then that was based upon their evaluation score. Whenever you guys are ready, I need a motion and a second to approve the pay increases, the 2018-19 pay increases with the list in front of you. Make a motion that we approve the 2018-19 uh, pay increases. Um, so I do have a question. Mm -hmm. So a no movement one includes the CPO? Um, no. So if they <coughs> receive the CPI, so the CPI through the state was 2.1%. Um, whenever we looked at the budget, what we ended up marking the CPI only category down to was a 1.5% raise. Um, and so then they would only receive the 1.5 if they are already capped out of their classification schedule. So I have a motion and a second. But no other discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Combs. Uh, <clears throat> I'll vote yes. Master Barger. Yes. Master Tudor. Yes. Master Bucket. Yes. Just tell him. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. The only reason I kind of hesitated there was I just got it this morning, which I understand, and I'm sure it is right, but I'd most rather have it. Well, and one thing too, uh, we you know we talked about with the money being so tight this year that when we did our budget workshop that we gave just a, the CPI across the boards how we figured it, but but really if we had just get, after we discussed it uh, with our staff and our team, we're sort of going away from our our uh, our scale, you know if we just give a CPI across the board, so so we took that dollar amount we split it up so we changed our CPI to 1.5 so that so that those that um, are outstanding and score well and and, and, a, and their evaluation score show it that they get compensated more so than somebody that maybe doesn't you know so that's why we adjusted it so just for everybody's knowledge thanks Rachel thank you you just want to pick these up after just go ahead yeah, yeah. just go ahead I'm gonna keep mine in my packet because it stays in my packet but you can go ahead and collect the rest of them Yep. You want them back? Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> um, next is second reading of ordinance 1809. This is a budget amendment on the jail fund. Second reading of ordinance 1809 is a budget amendment on the jail fund. Glenn, are you going to present on this or do you want me just to? I can. Well, I mean, it's. It's, it's just second reading. Does yeah. anybody have any questions about it? State prisoners, uh, which actually <coughs> by the end of this month will be over more than that, but that's all we can budget them in. That's all we have time to. Right. Because we don't get the other, we're probably going to get another 60000 in. Yeah. Uh, so what do we do there? Do we have the budget amended in next year then, that amount? No. You, you can't do anything. That just goes into, it'll go into, come over as surplus from prior year. For surplus from prior year, okay. Yeah. All right. So do I have a motion and a second to approve second reading of ordinance 1809, budget amendment for jail fund? So move. Second. What do you project that surplus to be? Did you say and I We put 50000 in okay. uh, the budget for next year we think that's what's going to come over but really you, you don't really know until it's whatever's sitting in your checking account on june 30th 
Yeah. So it's really hard to guess. But you know, I'm hoping it'll be a little bit more than fifty thousand. But we always budget conservatively. I wish I hadn't asked the judge. Is that depending on your yeah. state income? It's just depending on when when checks come in. Yeah. You know. I mean, like in the past, some years, like we we've estimated, like in our general fund, be five million. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, we had five and a half million mm -hmm. um, in the. Anybody. We always try to, to estimate it conservatively. Yeah. yeah, I don't let Larry know that, though. So. Oh. Well, I am concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a motion to say, if no more discussion, call the roll, please. Master. <coughs> I've gotten ahead of myself. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Tudor? Yes. Uh, next second reading of ordinance 1810 is the budget amendment for the road fund. Uh, this uh, budget amendment is for $164,206. It's just transportation cabinet, yeah. discretionary money. Mm -hmm. How much was it, Joe? $164,206. Yeah, I've got. Is that what you said, Mark? For the Roger. When is that here, Mark, for blacktop or anything? Or just, uh, no, we put it back into the reserve for transfer, reserve. and transfer. it can be then it can be transferred to any line item that we might need. Okay. Yeah. Well, where it's discretionary money, it can be spent wherever, correct? Well, but it, this is already it's been reimbursing spent. us it's for reimbursed. money we've already spent. Yeah. So, it's we've already spent that money on blacktop, out of our blacktop line item, and they're giving us the money back. You have to spend it before the duty. Well, we've already spent. I don't know exactly what this hundred sixty-four thousand amount is. For, I don't know what it's actually for, but it goes into part of choosing or what uh, roads we buy. Top. Well, and they have to be approved too, don't they, Willie? Yes, sir. Okay, I, I understand. And they are. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. I understand. Hey, you get your piece. You get I your percentage. Piece, you get your percentage, I promise you. Yeah. 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 They would not send us a check if they were not approved. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, you're welcome. I promise you, you get your 10%. Judge, I move to approve ordinance 1810. I'll second. second. So I have a motion and a second. No more discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Buckin? Yes. Master Cole? Yes. Master yes. Barger? Yes. Just Tudor? Yes. Uh, next is a uh, second reading of ordinance 1811, fiscal court drug policy. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. <laughs> <Deja vu. laughs> um, so there were not any changes to the drug and alcohol free workplace policy from the first reading. This is another good cleaned up document. So it's a good job on that. Is that a motion? Yes. So I have a motion. Uh, to approve second reading of ordinance 1811, the fiscal court drug policy. Do I have a second? Second. I <clears> have <throat> a motion to say. No more discussion. Call the roll, please. <coughs> Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, next, second reading of ordinance 1812. This is a land use change, 2827 Lexington Road from UC7 Urban Corridor Agriculture to UC3 Urban Corridor Neighborhood Commercial. For 6.82 acres. Um, and just for everybody's uh, information or knowledge, when we had our first reading the other day, uh, we originally made it the same ordinance number uh, that was before, but we'd already given that ordinance number out. Ordinance numbers didn't really matter, the mean thing. But this is actually ordinance 1812, okay? So that's the new order. Uh, in a, an ordinance of Madison County Fiscal Court, Kentucky, approving the zone change of 2827 Lexington Road, Richmond, Madison County, Kentucky, uh, and authorizing the amendment of the official zoning map of Madison County, Kentucky. So this is the part that we added. Whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court, upon hearing testimony from the petitioner of the zone change and concerned citizens, found that because there was no UC4 general commercial property contiguous with the proposed property, and because both the petitioner of the zone change and the citizens who objected to the zone change to UC4 were now in agreement that UC3 neighborhood commercial was the more appropriate classification, the Mass County Fiscal Court made a finding of fact 
that UC3 neighborhood commercial was the more appropriate zone change classification. Petitioner further agreed to be bound by certificate of land use restriction, which is attached here to and made a part hereof. So y'all have had a chance to, uh, well, y'all been in all the meetings on this, um, how it came from planning commission to us. Um, and I think this is a, Judge, I think it's end of this. a more appropriate uh, classification. I think there was some uh, discrepancy in the zone change from some of the neighbors out there. The first uh, word was general commercial, and the two parties have come together and agreed on the neighborhood commercial, and everybody seems to be they have. on the same page on this. Party. So I'm very much uh, more in favor of this than the general commercial. I think this will work better for the neighborhood. I'll make a motion we adopt this. Okay, so we have a motion to approve the second reading of ordinance 1812 land use change for 2827 Lexington Road from UC7 Urban Corridor Agriculture to UC3 Urban Corridor Neighborhood Commercial for 6.82 acres. Do I have a second? I'll second. So, All right. Hang on just a minute. So, so what that we had asked to see at the at the last court was having this discussion was the actual document that they had agreed upon which Judd had with him. I don't know if anybody else has seen it or but I'd mm -hmm. like to have a copy of that just for sure. the records. So that's all right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just, now, Marty, are you comfortable with these? Yes. Okay. I, you know, I think it I come back, actually right back to you. Yes. Are you comfortable? What can you do what you can't do? Right. And that's understand. the reason I'm asking you this question. I understand it better now. And we have this document, and they understand that that's the rules they have to go by. Office will be enforcing it if there's a problem. Well, I think everybody will be protected with this. Yeah, yeah I think it's good. I think, I think. And I have an extra copy of this if anyone would want it or take it with you and me here or whatever. You're more than welcome to it. So thank you for this. Yeah. All right, so I have a motion to say. There's no more discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Cole? Yes. Master Barger? Uh, I understand that both parties uh, agreed on this. Satisfy my own conscience, I don't know. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Just tell me. Yes. Thanks, guys. Uh, next is first reading of Ordinance 1813. This is to amend the land use and subdivision regulations. Uh, Madison County, Kentucky Fiscal Court, Ordinance 1813, Amendment to Ordinance Number 00 02, and Ordinance of the Madison County Fiscal Court, Kentucky, amending Ordinance 00 02, the Madison County Planning. And zoning regulations regarding uh, uses allowed. Uh, be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Madison County, Kentucky, whereas the Madison County Office of Planning and Development identified a need to make many warehouses a permitted use in IC4 IC zones. And whereas the Madison County Planning Commission had a public hearing on Tuesday, June 19, 2018, to consider said amendment to the regulations. After discussion of the same, the Commission found that permitting many warehouses in IC4 zones desirable when developed with a proper site development plan. And whereas the commission voted to recommend to the Madison County Fiscal Court that the text of section 402.6 business services of the Madison County Planning and Zoning Regulations be changed to make many warehouses a permitted use in UC4 IC zones. Uh, now, therefore, be it ordained and enacted by the Fiscal Court of the County of Madison, Commonwealth of Kentucky, that the findings of Madison County Planning Commission are hereby adopted and that the text of the Section 402.6 Business Services Madison County Planning and Zoning Regulations be changed to make many warehouses a permitted use in the UC4IC zones. Uh, Madison County Planning Commission. So, if y'all approve uh, the first reading of Ordinance 1813. Uh, amend land use subdivision regulations. I need a motion and second. So move. Do I have a second? Second. All right, motion and second. You want discussion? Discuss? Yeah, sure. <coughs> Absolutely. The biggest concern I have with the, uh, uh, the, the storage units don't bother me, uh, but they need to comply with, uh, I guess, the, the setting that they're in mm -hmm. and look good maybe for a year or two, and then the buildings begin to fade, the metal buildings or whatever, uh, that needs to be taken care of because these businesses that's going to be around them is still going to look good, and they just kind of go downhill. But uh, if there's some agreement there that they have to be kept up or whatever, I'm okay. 
Right. We're going to discuss with some uh, landscape buffering right. in, the, in the future. Right. It's not in this document, but they, there, there's landscape buffering already between mm -hmm. certain zones, but not necessarily the same zone. Right. But, so we're going to address that in the near future with the Planning Commission and come back with a recommendation of a landscape buffering between businesses okay. with yeah. many warehouses involved. So th this came up, uh, and of course I asked the question of why could storage units be in neighborhood commercial, but they can't be in general commercial. You know, why can't they be on the interstate? <clears throat> well, the reason was is because they look bad, they say. Ten years down the road, a, a garage door could be dented. Well, I didn't, to me, that didn't really warrant not allowing it. I mean, it didn't make sense. You know, if we, if we, we, we shouldn't stop growth and opportunity uh, in our community uh, because something's going to look bad 10 years. You know, we should just make sure that we put rules in place to make sure that from outside looking in, it's, it still looks good. Correct. You know, yeah. so I think that's what really started this one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, this is nothing new because we discussed this just way before you were here. Yeah. And, you know, we even got down to the paint and stuff like that. We do have ordinance. Golly, I don't know how many years ago that's been. I don't know if it's, we've ever enforced it. But well, I think a lot of this it stuff would be will good be, to bring it up today. And I think a lot of this will be policed in a sense at the site development plan. Correct. I mean, this yeah. is what the planning commission's uh, supposed to take in consideration when they're approving a the site development plan. If they approve plan. that, then that's what we go by when mm -hmm. they. Right. I think what we're looking for here is to make sure nothing becomes an eyesore down yep. the road. You know, right. Usually everything's built, it looks nice and new and everything, but we need to make sure that the maintenance stays up on them, the landscaping stays up on them, and conceal these as much as possible in areas that sees a lot of view. Right. And that's also why we have a property maintenance code too. That's right. To make sure that we, people comply with what that is. We have the tools. To yep. We have Marty to enforce it. Now we got burned. And, and, things, and to be honest with you guys, to me, things like this increase our revenues. You know, uh, uh, allowing, promoting opportunity and promoting development. Well, it promotes especially growth. Especially on our, it promotes growth. Right. And it's on our urban corridor. You know, right. we're not saying that, we're not saying that, you know, out on Wheeler Branch in Pusey, we want to put storage units, you well, know. we're already. Uh, this is in, this is in our urban corridor that we've already created based off our comprehensive plan. That's correct. Permitting these in, in neighborhoods. Yeah. Four right. hours, so. Yep, you know. that's right. Yep. All right, so I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> no more discussion, call the roll, please. Master <coughs> Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Cole? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. All right, next is uh, first reading of Ordinance 1814, amend um, uh, land use and subdivision regulations again. It's an ordinance of the Mass Camp Fiscal Court, Kentucky, amending uh, ordinance number 00-02, the Mass Camp Planning and Zoning Regulations regarding parking requirements and residential developments, uh, be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Madison County, Kentucky, whereas the Mass Camp Office of Planning and Development identified a need to update and improve the Madison County Planning and Zoning Regulations regarding parking requirements for residential developments. And whereas the Mass Camp Planning Commission had a public hearing on Tuesday, June 19, 2018, to consider said changes to the regulations after discussion of same found that the proposed changes in the parking requirements were more suitable for the <coughs> realities of proper residential development in Madison County. Whereas the Madison County Planning Commission voted to recommend to the Madison County Fiscal Court that the text of section 404.3, number of spaces required, be changed as follows. Residential single family and duplex, which is two family, two for the first bedroom and one for each additional bedroom. Multifamily, which would be more than two bedrooms, would be two uh, for the first bedroom and one for each additional bedroom. Same thing. Why is that in there twice? It's the same thing. Well, it's two different uses. So you got multifamily, okay. so like an apartment complex versus a duplex. So you'd have a three it's unit or bigger. Language. It is the same language, okay. but it's it's a you have single family, uh, duplex, duplex, and then you have multifamily, which is a triplex or bigger. Or better, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's just the way it's listed in our in our land use regs. And the, the planning commission wanted to make a, they didn't want to <coughs> penalize the, you know the single they wanted the single family to be they actually made it more because before in the old mm -hmm. it was two per dwelling. 
you know, it wasn't per bedroom. Now yeah. they're actually adding for if you got three bedroom, you got to have three. Yeah, have two, two, <coughs> four. Four. Okay. Three bedroom with four. Yes, that's right. Yeah, four. Yeah. Correct. <coughs> I don't guess we could add on there no street parking, Kimmer. That means something different. Yeah, and I don't now, think we don't really have street parking in subdivisions now. I mean, we don't yeah. park on county roads anymore. I do. Well, yeah, we all do, no. Right. I know we all do, but that's I think that's a law enforcement. But that's and also that's part of uh, some of that's part of your restrictions too. I think whether the developer when they developed it allows street parking or not. I know some restrictions say there's no street parking. You know, and I mean, yeah. now if somebody has a birthday party or something like that. But well, I don't understand that. Park. I wouldn't want to <coughs> probably come on some pushing snow or somebody. It does, yeah. yeah. Willie and Scott didn't deal with it when he pushed the snow. <coughs> so do I need a motion second for the first reading of 1814 on the par uh, parking. amending the land use subdivision regulations dealing with parking? That's the second reading. That's the first reading. Is that the first reading? Mm -hmm. It should be the first reading. We ain't read this before, so you gotta have it. Okay, I see it. Yeah. So moved. Second. So our motion is second. If no more discussion, call the roll, please. Master Tudor. Yes. Master Bucking. Yes. Master Combs. Yes. Master Berger. Yes. Just a yes. Uh, next is the first reading of Ordinance 1815. This is amend land use and subdivision regulations. An ordinance of the Mass County Fiscal Court, Kentucky, amending ordinance number 00 02, Mass County Planning and Zoning Regulations regarding site and dimensional requirements as they relate to the maximum density for multifamily residential developments. Uh, be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Mass County, Kentucky, whereas the Mass County Office of Planning and Development identified a need to update and improve the Madison County Planning and Zoning Regulations regarding maximum density for <clears throat> multifamily residential developments. And whereas the Madison County Planning Commission held a public hearing on Tuesday, June 19, 2018 to consider said changes to the regulations after discussion of the same, made findings that increasing the maximum density as proposed would be consistent with the multifamily residential density of the City of Richmond and as such was desirable and that such density increases would only be possible under the current regulations for site development in areas of the county with the existing infrastructure to support such density and as such was in keeping with comprehensive plan and good development practices. So, and whereas the Mass County Planning Commission voted to recommend to the Mass County Fiscal Court that the text of section 402.1-2, multifamily residential, be changed to allow a maximum density of 14.24 units per acre and that the text of section 402.5-2A multifamily residential be changed to allow a maximum density of 14.24 units per acre. So can I have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of ordinance 1815 amend land use and subdivision regulations increasing the density Move. Second. So I have a motion and second. Do we have any discussion? Judge, this is in areas where there's uh, already uh, sewer available. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Public sewer is available <coughs> in these areas. Yeah. Yeah, you know, our comprehensive plan is really designated. If you look at our zoning map, it's really designated these urban corridors. Um, and we've spent, I mean, millions of taxpayer dollars on big nice sewer systems and you know and I say we I say we as a community I mean this has been going on for a comprehensive plan probably back in the early 2000s I'm gonna guess and Larry you were here so you, you remember all the start of all this yes, um, and Kent and the fiscal courts in the past have really promoted uh, sewer and water upgrades and the infrastructure upgrades along really if you really think about it the i-75 corridor and 52 uh, you know those those corridors really uh, create a plus sign in our county uh, because i-75 and so uh, i i don't uh, think it really makes sense uh, where we are today uh, especially on the north end a new school going in not being able to have uh, some of those complexes or opportunities for developments right. um, 
And they still have to meet all the criteria. With yeah, the everything's the same. If they don't have the proper infrastructure, they will they'll get turned down. But right now, we're right now our regs say that you can build six units per acre. Correct. Uh, and we're saying we're urban, but yet we don't have really urban rules. And so this really gets more in line with the urban areas, and and that's why we really felt like, or I guess that's why that the not planning, we the, the planning, planning commission, commission really yeah. felt like that you could follow what Richmond uses. That's what we did. Marty, this restricts to two level units, is that correct? No. What, what's the no, there's no restriction on the height and this and this the monetarily, you know, because when you get so many stores you start having to sprinkle Yeah. It's you know, the state gets involved and so and, and you know, like our chief, you know, we have a DRT which is development review team that uh, when somebody comes in to do a site development plan, um, it has to go through DRT and Chief, you are involved in that, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that Chief looks at is fire flow, is hydrants, um, size of building, how tall they are, those types of things. And, and I think plan, some of the planning commission members mentioned to me too is that they really didn't want to set a height to it because, I mean, what if you have a, what if you have a, a Marriott or right. Hampton Inn wants to come out to um, exit 97 or put a hotel at exit 95 or uh, so. <clears throat> if you got somebody that's wanting to build a <clears throat> two-level apartment, well, we're talking about we're talking about more more parking need for two levels than you are for the restrictions that you put on one level. No, because it's based off bedrooms. We're talking about family residence here, though, instead of hotels. We're talking about you're talking. We're talking about heights, heights of buildings. Is I, what I know you're talking you, about. you were giving an example of building a, a, a motel or something coming out one of the exits. We're talking about family multi-family units here. Yeah, I was just using the hotel as an example of a height of a building. Okay. So we could, you could use the same example with apartments. <clears throat> I mean, but but a lot of that is going to be restricted, be restricted from by the side of the development plan yeah, the and the development plan. review team. Sprinkler systems, I mean, it just becomes cost, cost prohibitive at some point. But there are codes. I think if you get over three stories, it, spr it has to be sprinkled. Right? Yeah, I think it's right. I'm Pretty not sure the exact number. I think it's three stories and above has to be sprinkled, but I, I don't know that for sure. What, what kind of a scale do we use, uh, not just for this, but for <clears throat> just a regular house or whatever, how much water they catch in a catch basin before it runs off the property? Well, those are calculations done by engineers, uh, you know, hydraulic engineers. They bring them to us to meet their eggs. I, I don't know the actual numbers. Well, I can, I can tell you right now, city and county both, it's not enough because it's running off way too fast. I mean, we can see that every day. Uh, it needs to be caught more. I mean, I know that takes up property that they could develop. But that's just part of the building. Right, that's part of the storm sewer. Yes, yeah, right. Well, what happens there a lot of times, you are right, Roger, they're not big enough. But what happens there over a period of time, somebody's eat a little piece of that out where that water could get all out there. Judge, you know it, and I do too, and I see it all the time. But I guess you're going to have to catch them in the act. We're not the first community to have no, proposed absolutely. buildings It won't like be that. the last. Right. So it's got to be addressed. All right, so I have a first and a second on first reading of Ordinance 1815, amend land use subdivision regulations for the maximum density of 14.24 <laughs> units per acre uh, for multifamily. So moved. So I've already have a motion and second, right? Yep. Yeah. So now we'll no more discussion. Just call the roll. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. yes. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Just Taylor? Yes. Uh, next is the first reading of Ordinance 1816. This is to amend land use and subdivision regulations as well. An ordinance of the Mass County Fiscal Court, Kentucky, amending ordinance uh, number 00 02, the Mass County Planning and Zoning Regulations regarding site and dimensional requirements uh, as they relate to the maximum building heights in certain zones. Here's your, here's your building heights. Uh, be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Massachusetts County, Kentucky, whereas the Massachusetts County Office of Planning and Development identified a need to update and improve the Massachusetts County Planning and Zoning Regulations as they relate to maximum building heights in various zones. And whereas the Massachusetts County Planning Commission held a public hearing on Tuesday, June 19, 2018, to consider said changes to the regulations after discussion. Did I say something wrong? No. Oh, good. Right. 
After discussion of the same, made findings that omitting limits on building heights was warranted to promote growth in the county in areas that possessed adequate infrastructure and fire protection to support same and that the current regulations were overly restricted. And whereas the Mass County Planning Commission voted to recommend to the Mass County Fiscal Court to change the text uh, of 402.5-2 multifamily residential to omit following language, maximum building height of 40 feet, three stories, and to change the text of section 402-2A multifamily residential to omit the following language, maximum height building of 40 feet, three stories, and to change the text of section 402.5 dash two multifamily residential to omit no, note three which is eight units per building to change the text of section 402.5 dash 2a multifamily residential to omit note three which is also that to change the text of section 402.5 dash 11 plan mixed use development to omit the following language maximum building height 40 feet three stores and to change the text Man, do I have to sit here and read every one of these? Laws and mercy. No, you're not. I won't do it again. <clears throat> um, to change the text of section 402.5-3 neighborhood business to omit the following language, maximum building height 30 feet. And to change the text of section 402.5-4 general business to omit the following language, maximum building height 30 feet. And to change the text of section 402.5-4 general business Kelly, are you getting all this? Also. All right, I hope so. <laughs> to omit the following language, maximum bidding height 30 feet, and to change the text of section 402.54 IC, interstate commercial, to omit the following language, maximum bidding height of 30 feet. To change the text of section 402.5-5A, which is light industrial, to omit the following language, maximum bidding height of 40 feet. To change the text of section 402.55B, which is heavy industrial, to omit the following language, maximum building height of 50 feet. And to change the text of section 402.56, public and semi-public, to omit the following language, maximum building height of 40 feet, three stories. <coughs> well, I guess we can fire the fire at three stories, can't we, Chief? I mean, we don't have no ladder trucks. We have to call over Richmond for theirs. But we, do we have mutual aid with them on their ladder trip? Yeah. Yeah. Are you? We also. Okay. I can see where that comes into a problem yeah. when you get up that yeah. tall. Because we're on the drain. Which one was the landing? I mean, yeah, he's the ladder up there. Right. The longest extension ladder is 24 feet. Which would carry over that space. They won't even be good on the wall they build them up. It's basically what it's done is it's meeting it's omitting any really any kind of height. Let's see. Yeah. Any kind of height restriction. Right. It's omitting um, the language that was previously in the document. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you're taking it away with the previous orders. Right. So this is taking that out. Mm -hmm. With that comment you made, and then the new comment you'll make is accepting that you are taking it out. Yeah. These type terms require sprinkling. They will. They will. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of you know, it's kind of prohibitive at some point certain buildings that you don't want to go that high to put the sprinkler system. What is um well I know we're gonna get a chance to take a look at this in between, but just for the record, my ordinances is from fourteen and fifteen. In Dropbox by the exact same thing. It's not that one. Oh are they? Yeah. Well this is correct. Yeah, that's cool. We'll, we'll get a chance to look at that. That's all good. Yeah. I've got it up until he gets specified what's what's the height. So I look at them up for exact same document. Okay. So I need a motion a second to approve the first reading of eighteen sixteen. So moved. Second. And this is on the building height requirements. Okay. So I have a motion second. Do I have any more discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. Berger. Yes. Mr. Tudor. Yes. Mr. Bucket. Yes. Just a. Yes. So I need. So Tom, do you need copies of all these land the last ones? Just one. the last one. <coughs> yeah. right. Let's see. Do you not have to read the second half of that? I hope not. Okay. I don't know. I'm asking. We've already approved it yeah. for first reading. Can I read it at the next second reading? Sure. Too late now. 
So now they're forbidden ordained and enacted by physical court of Kentucky Mass County Common Committee to find these Mass County Planning Commission are hereby adopted and it's further ordained and enacted as follows. It's the same thing. Okay. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just regurgitated. Just more paperwork for you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> um, next is, of course, I, we've already done what's on the agenda. I think it's 15 because we did it with Colin getting up a minute ago. Uh, next is the memorandum of agreement to Safety City. Uh, this is an agreement that we uh, that we sign every year, guys, with the health department, uh, where they really promote Safety City. Uh, they uh, schedule a lot of the events and stuff that goes on out there. And I need a motion to second to allow me to sign this memorandum of agreement with the Mass County Health Department. Good job. Uh, Make a motion we continue the memorandum of agreement with the safety health department, safety city. Second. Yeah, are there any money changes hands there? Mm -hmm. So Lord takes care of everybody. Yeah, we're responsible for maintenance, you know. We we but but we don't give that money to them. We're responsible for the upkeep. We pay the electric bills and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you're all they're they're they monitor. Uh, and maintain, uh, I guess, really all the field trips and the kids, school kids and stuff that come. Yeah. Well, you know, I know they do a good job. And, uh, I think it's very important, especially for our children younger, to understand uh, what's going on. But the only complaint I've ever had out of anything at Safety City was the flashing lights <coughs> of the night. Some reason they stayed on certain times and the neighborhood didn't like it. But other than that, that's the only complaint I've ever heard. Of. Uh, and I'd like to see more use as time goes on. Of course, school will help now. Kids are busy. But uh, hopefully, when school does return, we'll have more classes, more and more. I think this is a great uh, way to educate our young people about the safety, not only with the uh, fire prevention ideas from fire the, the police officers are out there some other issues are discussed out there household safety i think and so anytime we uh, educate our, our kids on being safe at school or in, out on the street or at home or wherever you know we need to keep them uh, knowledgeable on how to take care of themselves well it's like csep that trailer they have you know and they have the smoke bombs and the stuff in it if you've ever attended one of those, it's amazing what these children learn coming from that. <clears throat> I never did go through one because the door wasn't big enough for me. <laughs> but you know, it is. It's amazing what they understand and, and how to crawl and how to get out. So, you know, anytime we can educate our younger people, I think it's an obligation on our part. And, and our fire department, I think they help a lot with the grounds out there, don't they? Yeah. They, do y'all mow and stuff? Do all the upkeep. Yeah. Yep. I've always heard a lot of positive comments from, from teachers that take those students through those that they get the opportunity to, to see the firemen and folks in their gear so that they do ever encounter you know, that life situation where they're not scared to death of them for one thing. So that's another good opportunity. I think, uh, I think Butch there. was uh, a big advocate for Safety City. Yeah. Butch Kirby, I think <laughs> he got it going. He really, till he retired, he he really maintained it and operated it and, and supported it and Ain't did a great job scheduling, though, scheduling. But then I think when he retires, when maybe the previous administration got with the health department, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it's a good public service all the yeah. way around. What age group can they take through there? What, what age groups do they? Uh, most time preschool up to about fourth grade, yeah. but it's open for anybody. Yeah. We've we've actually had adults come through at 40 to 50 year old and took them through with just street crossings across the street properly, water safety, boat safety, just any kind of, even mowing the yard, how they can be injured by being out in the yard playing while mom or dad's mowing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a good learning experience all the way around for any age group. Yep. Appreciate y'all doing that. Thank you. So I have a motion and a second. No more discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Burton? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bucking? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thanks, guys. Uh, next, an update on our needle exchange program. It's Nancy Crew, our director of Mass County Health Department, is here. Thank you all for having me. As always, you want me to go up there and, and 
please. Okay, sure. Uh, you wouldn't expect me to not come without a handout? Oh, no. I'm no. sorry, guys. <laughs> we got to have a handout. I'm disappointed it's not cold. <laughs> well, we try to save those. Thank you. Call the printer thing. You all know that. I'm going to trade you. Okay. Okay. Thank Will you, you take that back? I appreciate that. Yeah. And thank you all so much for signing and approving that. Yeah. We think that's a very important service. It is. Sheriff, when I'm done going over this one, because this is good data here. Uh, again, I want to thank you all for coming, uh, for, for having me come. Francette said y'all wanted an, an update on the service. Uh, I guess we've been in business, if you will, for about 10, 10 months. We started last August. And uh, this kind of gives you all an overview of the numbers of participants, age range, zip code, race. Uh, employment status, uh, what have you, drugs of choice, the times they actually use, uh, <coughs> the participants use per day, how they learned about the program. As you can see, the two-thirds of them learned about it through friends and family. We find that they're referred by their friends and family. Um, HIV status, hep C status, numbers of syringes given out. What I point out is some of uh, the participants bought in syringes before they start the program and brought them to us. Uh, syringes given out and uh, returned. Bear in mind that not everybody comes back. These are one-time use syringes, uh, but not everybody comes back. And uh, we're still working very hard at outreach and at building up the communities, not only awareness of it, but trust. And uh, that's important. We've had excellent cooperation from law enforcement and support from from the community. Right now statewide I believe there are 45 syringe exchanges in operation. So that makes over a third of the counties in Kentucky have one. It's not something new or avant-garde or and uh, we've gotten inquiries both formal and informal. I just got an inquiry uh, relayed to me for the from the county attorney in the northern part of the county to send a copy of the ordinance that, or the resolution, uh, excuse me, the fiscal court signed to put the needle exchange into place. So, and I've gotten informal inquiries from several surrounding counties and directors that don't have them. So it's, uh, and what I would like you also to pay real attention to is the current, pro the, the bulleted points 10 or 12 <coughs> about the current programming that we have what what we're finding is you know this is just one aspect of the opioid crisis it's all a big knot of problems <coughs> STI transmissions up uh, hep hepatitis A there's a statewide outbreak of that that's also 86 percent of people who have hep A during in this outbreak are either homeless and drug users or our drug users, 71% uh, percent of them have, so that again is tied in with this. Right now we only have two cases, but once we get to five, if we do, I hope we don't, um, confirm cases, it will, they'll be uh, recommending community-wide vaccination for that. So you know, we've had to respond to that as well. Also, you are looking at uh, more community education on STIs and on, uh, we're actually going to update our board on that in August. It's a nationwide trend of STI transmission. Mm -hmm. up. Um, and we've got great partners. Again, I singled out law enforcement and, and you all as our government partners, both working with Drug Court, Salvation Army, uh, and uh, also uh, the libraries in an attempt to promote our services and not just the SCP but other services as well. As I always say, you can't have too many friends in public health and we look for partners. Some of these are people that, you know, are groups that we maybe haven't worked with as much in the past. But we're all in this with common cause to deal with this issue. Yeah. Nancy, yes. Nancy, these numbers are staggering. I mean, I know. we're talking about 65 participants with a total of uh, 
4,878 syringes. Well, they get 30, up to 35 <coughs> maximum per visit wow. if they turn them if they turn them in. I mean, actually, our numbers are frankly lower than I thought they would be as, as far as the total persist, uh, participants. Lexington Fayette's been in business with their exchange uh, a couple years longer than we have, plus or minus, and you're looking at, they see, at some, and I, I follow them on Facebook. Uh, sure, I'm sorry, did I, did no, I give somebody one? I'm it's sorry, okay. Mr. Combs, nothing personal. Yeah. I apologize. I thought I did. Actually, that was a question. You actually left out both of them. Oh, sorry. One I, of them got, didn't I do got things. one sheet and he got the other. One well, of them didn't do that's it. all right. Yeah. I won't share it either. Well, no, I, mean, I know what y'all are like. <laughs> Nancy, are, are we seeing, seeing any people requesting help or yes. seeking counseling yes. or anything yes. to improve yes. their situation? Yes, we are. We actually work with the uh, with a uh, counselor at bluegrass.org that he comes to every day when he's uh, not off to every uh, daytime um, uh, session that we have. We're now having a Monday afternoons three to six and then uh, Thursday and that's in Richmond Thursdays in Berea from one to four. He comes to both of both of those locations and we have had some people seek services immediately or later in the process but you know and we're there and again that's part of the reason uh, participants in this service are five times more likely to seek care than those who don't seek needle exchange. The, the uh, syringes that are given out uh, so how many are, how many have brought been brought back well, right now we're looking at a return rate somewhere higher than 75 percent. So a, a again, return rate of what? About six, if you have total services given out, so syringes given out divided by around three, that's 4,800, uh -huh. last figure, divided by 3,000 or so, 75, 80 percent. But bear in mind they have to, it's a one for one exchange. When you get 35, you have to bring 35 back in to get 35 again. Oh, so the first 35 you get is basically given? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so your be, first visit you don't have to have one right, for one, right. but from then on you have to have one for one. Yes, absolutely. The, the really impressive number on that is the, and this is what we hoped for, this was part of what we hoped yes. for, this was part of what all the complaints were about originally, is the syringes given out on the return visits and the syringes returned. You look yes. at 3,006 given out. 2869 returns. So you don't talk about 180 or so floating around, give or take a few. Those are those are 2870 that's not in the parks. Yeah. They're not scattered down on the streets. Right. That's the idea. That's a good thing. That's the idea. And again, as I was saying before, the numbers have actually, you know, it's been slow. It's been a trust building event. I have an excellent staff that purses this. Uh, we also are will have nine more trained with 20 staff, that will be about 20% of my total employees. That's quite a large number of people who voluntarily are participating in, that, in this program. Because we didn't make it an employment uh, requirement. We wanted, as I said to y'all several times, people who felt called to do this. And uh, it's, uh, we're really looking, I, I think numbers wise, I would have expected larger numbers. I don't want larger numbers, you know. I. I'd like to it's think not a plus, it's not a plus, but it's <laughs> it's it's the times. That's just it. Again, Lexington Fayette uh, is may that may see somewhere two hundred plus per week in their program. If you cut our they have what roughly we have roughly slightly more than a quarter of their population. Mm. Isn't that about right? I don't we have ninety one thousand people, right? Three hundred twenty, three hundred and thirty thousand people. Mm. And we might be looking at eventually, and this is a sad figure, I don't like to report this, but maybe 40 plus people per week at both locations. We're also expanding into the evenings on Tuesdays. We tried two faith-based locations in downtown Richmond that invited us to come in and that we had approached. Uh, we really wanted to succeed there. We didn't get the numbers coming to those two churches. So after about six months, we ended that. We had an MOA with yeah. them. And uh, right now we're looking for evening hours five to seven in Richmond on Tuesdays as well to see how that takes off. 
And again, if it doesn't, we're going to be adjusting hours to, you know, fit the need and and see what works. And again, the, the support of you all and the other two governments, law enforcement and our partners has been exemplary and much appreciated. These are tough times. And we have to rise to meet, we have to rise to the occasion. What are your locations again? Uh, again, uh, we're in Richmond at our health department on Monday afternoons, 3 to 6 p.m. And, and Thursdays in Berea, 1 to 4, so six hours a week, both places. And we're adding Tuesday evening hours. In fact, I'm working it tonight, 5 to 7. So uh, we'll be, and, and again, we'll see how that works. The evenings, Tuesday evenings didn't work at the two, faith, at the two churches. That doesn't mean we won't see more more uh, participants on on our own health department campus. We've got around 65 people participating in this program. Yes. I say there's five times that many out there that aren't, or maybe even more than that. Possibly so, yes. Back to Safety City for a minute. Yes, sir. Are the children that come through there, are they taught about not picking up needles and I'm not medicines or whatever aware of that. I mean, that's a safety. Yes, that's a very uh, good thought. I can mention that to Lloyd and see about adding that. They, they uh, need to know to not pick that up to a needle the and report it to uh, an adult or somebody. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good thought. Thank you. Very much so. Excellent thought. We're glad to look at that and just on, on the curriculum, we can certainly mention it. It is very fun to hear them on the phone, the kiddos learning how to dial 911. That's an important <laughs> skill for these yeah. kids. and. Uh, be able to uh, summon help, whatever that may be. Well, it's evident that the choice of drugs is terrible. And I think that would probably be a question for Sheriff Cole. I'm sure it's probably because of the money. Would that be correct? Yeah. It's sad to say, but that's the choice. discussions about this and I was a not I was a really really hard sale on this to start with but um, your numbers are working yes and Thank you. it is doing what we had hoped to do and that was cut down on the possibilities of the spread of the HIV and other things through the community and you can see that and now you ain't seen anybody have to come eat that once the meat is or takes up the butt that's just the reality of the world we live in the good thing about it is, is the numbers are not being distributed out, they're not being found in cars, not are all over the streets, not are all scattered. I mean, I'm, that's a good thing. Thank you. Yep. And one other just point to make, we have a free HIV testing day tomorrow. It's National HIV Testing Day. Again, a fellow traveler with all of these issues uh, that we've had to step up and take care of, that's at both of our health departments tomorrow. We're using a new 60-second test approved by the Department of Public Health called the INSTI test. Can you tell the times, please? Just announce the times. You're, yeah, you're, not, you're live right now. Right, so. I know. I'm not sure I recall the times okay. uh, exactly. They're on our social uh, media feed, and we're encouraging those who feel they want to be tested to come or call us and, and find out. Maybe more. give out your phone number there to health department. Okay. Our general number in uh, Richmond is, and this will get you both of our locations, 623-7312. Right. Thank you all. Thank uh, you, Nancy. Yes, sir. Nancy. I've said from the very beginning, you know, uh, this is a multi-phase process of kind of getting these people off these drugs. We have to start with prevention and education in an early age, and it follows right on up through school. It has to be enforced through churches through our family uh, structures it has to be enforced we've been able to uh, promote ourselves off of uh, tobacco so you know any kind of promotions we can do that anti-drug promotions I mean it's got to be helpful beneficial we, we have to educate our kids at a rather prevention rather than cures for them you know I mean w once they get to this stage uh, there's a possibility of of getting dried out and, and getting cured and getting healed, but it's so much harder after you get started. What month are we in on this program now? Is this the third or fourth? 10th? 
I think she said 10. October last year. August, I think. We started in August of last year. Oh, we've come a long way. Yes, I think so, sir. Yes. And as time goes on, I'm sure we're going to see more and more. I hope it's less and less, but I don't feel like that's going to be the answer. In an ideal world, I wouldn't be operating one at all. Okay. But this is, again, we're responding to the times that have afflicted all of our public agencies, our governments, hospitals, healthcare professionals. It's across the board and obviously not just in our county. I'm like Tom said, I struggled with this at, at the beginning when we first started. And, and I'll admit I've been criticized by some friends, local friends, saying, well, you give them to them free. And I said, well, if you use that many, they'll give them to you too. But nobody's ever been up there to get them. But I mean, you know, it's not that it, we're just giving stuff out. We're just trying to protect the community around them. Sometimes they understand it, sometimes they don't. I think that the part of the education part of it too, because ASAP uh, board does have a grant that where they're all going into the sixth grade in teaching. We also got a grant to extend that down into the third grade in our schools now. So third graders, sixth graders, they're starting to receive that education uh, process that all helps build along with this. So. And we obviously support that a great deal. Yeah. As you know, starting as early as possible, very important. That's that prevention component's important. Yes. Very much. It's good. Thanks, Nancy. I appreciate you being here. Thank appreciate you. you being here. Give us an update. Thank you all. Have, have a wonderful day. I appreciate you all very much. Uh, guys, uh, David Dutlinger with the Bluegrass Ag called. He couldn't be here today. Uh, so we marked him off the agenda just for your information. Next is appointments to the Board of Adjustments. Uh, I would recommend to fiscal court would like to reappoint George Dillon. Uh, he actually is our chairman of the Madison County Board of Adjustments, uh, and I would like to reappoint uh, George Dillon uh, as the Madison County Board of Adjustments board. So moved. Second. So I have a motion and a second. No discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Buckley? Yes. Master Cole? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Just tough. Yes. Uh, next is another reappointment. Uh, this is probably the shortest time, I guess, somebody served before they got reappointed but Chris Cooper uh, Chris if you all remember just about two months ago uh, we uh, replaced him uh, we had a, a board member that stepped down from the Board of Adjustments uh, he had to fulfill that two-month term so it's time to replace him uh, reappoint him now uh, to the Board of Adjustments so it would be my recommendation of fiscal court to reappoint Chris Cooper to the Mass County Board of Adjustments uh, his appointment expires on June 20th 2022 and the previous one was the same. Sorry, I didn't uh, announce that for George Dillon, but he was the same. It's a four-year appointment. I move to reappoint uh, Chris Cooper to the Board of Justice. Second. I have a motion and a second. No more discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Cole? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, next is the 2017 Sheriff's Tax Settlement. Good morning, dear. Good morning. How are you? Good. It's good to see your smiling face this morning. Bring some money. No, we're getting our money. Okay, you all got a settlement report in your Dropbox. Um, after all of our overpayments and underpayments, if you will look at the very bottom line, that is our settlement finals. Does that one see? Yes. Uh, this side plate should be being the boat. I'd have brought a pity with you. Well, I could give it to us. Well, I'm going to commend the sheriff on doing his job as sheriff to collect all these taxes, although I disagree with some of them, but I have no say in it. The only saying I have is on the county's part. But if it wasn't for the sheriff, they couldn't collect them. It's that simple. And hopefully someday, and I've been down this road for many times, and I'm going to visit one more time, we need to sit down and, and prepare a really good statement or something for the school board to try to get just a little extra money because of everything that he does for them. And after all, I said this earlier, if it wasn't for the sheriff, they couldn't collect them. So on these uh, 
So on this sheet, so y'all collected how many millions? Over 50. So over $50 million y'all collected in property taxes, and that's for the school, for the county, the library, the health department. State. State, mm -hmm. the all extension. The, right. All seven taxi districts. Mm -hmm. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. You proud of it? I'm proud of you it. Should be. You proud of it? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, you should I'd be. I'd like to have 20% yeah. of that road. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Mary Margaret, yeah. do you have a number of the delinquent taxes that haven't been collected? Um, it's right under a million, I think 912,000. That's kind of you, right, King? You were collecting those right now. Yeah. You were collecting since April 15th. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a little less, don't you, from it, what it was? I don't know what today. I know. Last year. I usually don't look at the, I look at the number of bills, not the, not the amount. Yeah. We had more come over this year. About but we had collected or so more. more. Yeah, we had more bills. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, I just need a motion and a second just to approve the sheriff's 2017 tax settlement. So no, gentlemen of it. Second. So I have a motion and a second. And I commend him and his department. Yep. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Call the roll, please. Master Combs? Yes. Master Burger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bucket? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, next is pay the year in claims for 2017-18 fiscal year. Every year, guys, this time of year, we go ahead and approve to pay uh, any additional claims that we have to pay between now and, and June the 30th. Uh, and then obviously at our next fiscal court meeting, uh, Glenn will bring you all in a spreadsheet that shows what all those charges were or what things that we did pay. So I need a motion and a second to allow us to go ahead and pay the year end claims for 2017-18 fiscal year. So move. move. There you go. So I got a motion, John Tudor, second, Larry Combs. No well, we've good. done this ever since oh, I've yeah. been here. Yeah. And That's a long time, fair. too. Man. Well, yeah, but it's only fair. And Glenn is not going to pay something if we don't have it anyway. I'm not going to sign the check. Well, okay, well, then we've got yeah. double. That's right. Yeah, yeah, double vision there. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion and a second. No more discussion. Call the roll, please. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, the judge's report. Uh, just a few announcements for upcoming events that's going on over the next couple of couple of weeks. Uh, Mass County Courthouse and its related offices will be closed Wednesday, July the 4th. So that'll be next Wednesday, July the 4th for Independence Day holiday. We will reopen on Thursday, July 5th at 8 a.m. Richmond, July 4th, fireworks extravaganza will be Wednesday, July 4th at Lake Reba. Event starts at 5 p.m. Fireworks will be at 10 p.m. Bria's Independence Day celebration will be Wednesday, July 4th at the Bria City Park. Program start at 6 p.m. and fireworks also at 10 p.m. Union City Days will be Saturday, July the 7th, beginning at 8 a.m. Uh, at the Union City Park and Union City Routing Club. Uh, there will be a car show, yard sale, games for kids, and many other activities all day. 2018 Bria Craft Festival will be Friday, July 13th through Sunday, July 15th at the Indian Fort Theater. Uh, just a reminder, and Tom, uh, this is really for you. Uh, just a reminder that the 2018 Kentucky River Suite uh, was rescheduled for Saturday, July the 28th. You get out. From, I certainly appreciate Scott redoing that because I was on vacation. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Yeah, yeah you can. Here, you thank you for that. Uh, you I'll couldn't be there. be there, so it, now you can. I'll be there. July the 28th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon yeah, at Fort Boonesburg. Uh, for more information, please call Mass Can't Sell Waste at 624-4709. I have to say that event actually is rewarding. I mean, you go down there at the river, um, and I mean, you just can't believe uh, really how much stuff uh, comes down it's, the river. It's hard to believe how many bags you fill up in one spot without yeah. even moving. Moving, yeah. Um, so awesome. it is really rewarding, and I would encourage anybody that can. It's a great, and man, if you got kids, man, it's great just to bring them out just to experience it and see it and to teach it a little something about uh, keeping our community cleaner. Um, so it, it, is a, it is a good event. Uh, vendor registration for the 2018 uh, Bria Spoon Bread Festival is open. So uh, obviously we had one year we didn't have spoon bread, but they got to come back and uh, it's a great event for our community, especially the Southern End and Bria. Uh, so anybody that's interested in the Spoon Bread Festival, uh, you can start registering now. Visit the Bria Chamber of Commerce website for complete information and forms. Comments from department heads. Everybody's like, will you hush? Let's go. 
Uh, next comments from Masters. Larry. Well, uh, two things against. Uh, I see our clerks here. Allie, Allie, thank you for coming. And, you know, I travel travel in and stayed along with all of you all, and, you know, I hear conversation back and forth about the exit on uh, North, which was 95. 95. 95. And I come through there yesterday at 4.30. Back there both ways. They were backed out both sides. Yeah. And I just, that's hard for me to believe because I, that's an accident looking to happen. It's every day. You know, I go through there a lot of times, maybe 10 or 11 o'clock, and it's not that far. But 4.30 yesterday, it was on both sides, and I'm talking about maybe a quarter mile. And I don't know, surely the state, uh, okay. where are they? It's supposed to be left this year. Well, I'll tell you, if How many place years y'all been here? I've been told for 14 years. Well, it's not my it's district. Be it's, next year. it's in Rogers, but. You know, wait till all the activities are out there. You haven't seen anything yet. There'll be school buses lined up down each side. One thing I did hear the other day, just, I mean, this is really good. I'm, I'm happy their school board has decided this, or, or the administration decided it. I, I'm not sure who, but uh, I was told the other day that the school was actually going to start at 7. And uh, Daniel Boone does that now. Uh, any of those that went to Daniel Boone. Glenn, did your kids go to Daniel Boone? No, they went to the Marshall. Uh, I'm pretty sure because Central and Daniel Boone uh, have the conflict there, they start early. And uh, Boonesboro, I heard the other day, is going to start at 7 and end at 2 just to help with the traffic control. Well, it's a nightmare. It really is. It'll start a little later in the season, too, I think. Last yeah, I'm not 20th, sure. 20th something. Of it. That's all I have other than that. Just glad to be here, Judge. Glad to hear, Larry. Thanks. Tom. Well, I don't have a lot today, Judge. I was on vacation last week. And Slacker. I certainly enjoyed that. I got some, a few phone calls while I was there, and um, uh, several of them had to do with uh, a lot of limb cleanup and overgrowth on uh, some different roads, and uh, uh, Mr. Willis and I will be taking a look at those uh, this week and trying to get back answers on what we can clean up and what we can't. Um, I still have and received some comments about the uh, ramp out at Will Green, and I know you and I, Judge, have talked about uh, looking to see if Cheryl could find some grant money for us to maybe do some repairs on that this winter. We could have the opportunity to draw that down and uh, fix that up. I said it before, it's still open. You can go out there and use it anytime you want. And, um, um, oh, I wanted to make a comment on the, for the sheriff. You know, congratulations not only on your budget, but, um, but after the last court, we saw your new vehicles. So you now have five new vehicles on the road, all equipped with radar. They're all equipped with radar. Front and back. <laughs> and uh, so, um, I mean, you, you got some good equipment over there, Sheriff, and we're happy to see that uh, that you could get that. Uh, that's all I really have. If anybody needs me, they can reach me at 200 9765. Thanks, Tom. John? I'd just like to touch on the, a little bit of the uh, mowing on the road. <laughs> I've had a couple calls this week on state roads that the county normally maintained in the past, and, and uh, it seems that the state is not clearing those roads as, as well as the county did. I just want to compliment how well and, and we went above and beyond on some of the state roads when the county mowed them. What a good job you all did, William Scott. Appreciate that. Uh, July the 7th is Union City Day down at the Rutan Club at Union City. Krista Renfro was taking donations to raise money down there. So if you have an item you're not using, want to get rid of, uh, they're going to do a silent auction down there and, and try to raise some money for the fire department down there. So if you have anything extra you want to donate a little bit, that will sure much be appreciated down at Union City. That's all I got. Yeah. Thanks, John. Ross? Uh, like John was talking, I've had a couple of calls. Uh, it's kind of odd. Both of them was about the same bridge, uh, probably a week apart. The Maple Grove Road, the little bridge with a million church there, uh, not ours, it's state. And they're surprised when you tell them that they think it's a county road, you know, but we can't, we can't fix that bridge. And guardrails is completely rusted off of it. I mean, you can just kick them over in the creek if you want to. But, uh, I don't know when the state's going to get around to it. I, I, uh, does the school bus even cross it? I'm not sure I would say. Do they cross it? 
It's got a 13 ton limit on it. Okay. Well, I've told them that the structure of the bridge underneath, I think, is good. You know, it's just from the top is what looks the best. I mean, the guardrails are gone. But uh, we can't do anything about it. I just want the people to know that uh, all we can do is, is, is ask the state to do something about it as far as we can go with it. Did we not put some black top on it, or did they do that? We patched it. Okay. I, that was I, after that flood, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah and, we, and I told them that I thought we had put some black top on it, but we know that it's not, you know, like it should be. But, uh, well, it peeled up on that flood. It, it peeled up that black top. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, what Larry's talking about, uh, X95, uh, as I said a while ago, 14 years ago, uh, we got this same story, but. 14 years ago, I went to District 7 to a meeting that they was having, the state was having on the truck stop before it was built and it was being laid out. And they had a map there with the entrances and I wasn't invited to it, but it was open to the public. So I showed up, so I didn't like it, but I just let them know, I said, the, the, where you got the entrances and where you got it laid out is, is not gonna work. And, after a little bit of discussion about where I thought it should be and, and at the end of the property, coming in and out, uh, they he hauled around and said, well, we spent a lot of money and time on the way it is and we're not changing. And that was the last word I heard about getting anything done. But uh, that's another one of those deals that's up to the state and I hope they start on it tomorrow. But uh, a lot of people down there is in danger every day when we go to work and come home. That's all we got, Judge. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Comments from the audience? Anybody here? Need to address the court? Nope. I need a motion uh, second to pay the claims and approve the transfers. So moved. Second. second. We got a motion and a second. No discussion. Call the roll, please. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Just two. Yes. Next court meeting is Tuesday, July the 10th, 2018. It's in Berea. Thank you. Real. You hear that? Gotcha. I'm going to say it again, Larry. Next court meeting is Tuesday, July the 10th, 2018, <laughs> in Berea. Yeah. I got everything turned up ready to go. <laughs> I need a motion to say to adjourn. Come on. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Cole? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Just a Yes. Yes. Yes.